What's going on, everyone? Welcome to another episode of the Fit, Healthy, and Most of All Happy podcast. I am your coach and host, Josh, here with his co host and co coach, KG, and I'm on the mic. And if you click this episode, chances are you want the golden. I don't know, the golden ticket here, if you will, to lose fat and gain muscle at the same time. And I assure you, this can be done. We have done this with tons of our clients. We've done this with ourselves. And today we're actually gonna walk you through this process, step by step, where your focus, your intention needs to be. And you might, well, I assure you, you're gonna learn quite a lot from this because there's things you probably thought were super important to this process that don't matter at all. Things you may overlook that matter a lot. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into this. So generally the process of gaining muscle while losing fat can be best summarized as a body recomp. This is a trendy word, sounds fantastic. Who doesn't want the body recomp? I'm sure even your grandma would want the body recomp. It sounds good, you're like, ooh, let's do it. Let's get in the lab, let's get it going. So with this process, you have to keep in mind you are trying to accomplish a lot. It will be easier to do dedicated phasings such as bulks and cuts, where you're really focused on one goal. But with a body recomp, you are indeed focusing on both. And the optimal goal is just improve your composition, your strength, your ability, and just really rework your body. This will be easiest to do if you are a new lifter because you can put on muscle very, very quickly. You can also lose fat very quickly. Be a little bit harder if you are a veteran lifter such as myself or Kyle, but we've just come out of a 60 day shred here. I wanna stack on some muscle and I wanna do it without putting on fat. I wanna maintain this level of leanness. So even for me, that will be my recomp. I'm looking to gain about four pounds of muscle while losing about two pounds of fat. That might not sound overly sexy, but I've been lifting 10 years. I'm not gonna be able to see my body go through as much change as quickly. The shock won't be as great as someone who's new. If you're new, like like clockwork, a lot of our clients, we are helping them lose 15 pounds of fat while gaining five to 10 pounds of new lean muscle. And that's why people look radically brand new over 90 days. Like a lot of people can't even recognize themselves. They're blowing away their family and their friends and they go away because of optimizing these factors. And we're gonna get right into it to you, uh, right into this with you today. So this is gonna be a really, really exciting episode. And even going through my lens, I've just finished this shred. I need a game plan. First and foremost, if you're looking to do this, the biggest tip I can have is to have this game plan. You just can't say, oh, I wanna lose fat and gain muscle and do nothing about it. This is a time where you need to be very calculated. You really need to know the underpinnings of your journey, where your intention, where your focus, where your effort needs to be. So really, I like to always start with what am I looking to accomplish? So I have very clear defined goals to gain four pounds of muscle, lose two pounds of fat. And for me, after lifting 10 years, I have less levers I can push and pull because I really need to be locked in and aware of what I'm going to do. So even with a new client, so a good example of this is a new client. If someone signs up with me, I'm able to look at everything from a full perspective. And if someone comes in wanting to achieve this goal, I'll start, I'll start with them as the individual. So what is their goal? They wanna look beach ready, what's their situation, how many days can they work out, do they have any things holding them back from being able to operate normally in the gym, do they have previous injuries, do they have dispositions, like what is holding them back? And really just looking at yourself as that avatar and planning from there is very productive. So for the rest of this episode, use yourself as that example and use the mind's eye. Be the fly on the wall and look at yourself as if you're looking at a different person. Be critically honest and from there you'll actually be able to plan this a lot better. So just even to start, one of my favorite things is looking in the mirror. Go to the mirror, go naked, look at your body and you'll see a lot you like and you'll see a lot that you can improve on. This isn't you hating yourself or being like, oh, I look horrible. Even I was reading today in my book, I read a book every day, The Daily Stoic, and he was talking about how Marcus Aurelius had mentioned that a big part of stoicism isn't being negative to yourself. They never look at yourself and say, hey, Josh, you're such a piece of crap. You look like trash. Why aren't you more muscular? Instead, you can look at yourself rationally and say, oh, I, do, I have really, really strong chest, but I have a big barrel right now. I have a big stomach, and that's something I need to improve. You don't need to hate yourself for that. You can look at it rationally and begin a plan from it. Where things get tougher is if you approach it from a position of humor and you're just always joking, grabbing your stomach, but it's you kind of wearing your insecurity. Or if you try and ignore it and you wear things to purposely hide and you never address the fact that you want to change or see change, that's where you're actually going to do yourself more of a disservice. So I think there's nothing wrong 
with looking in front of a mirror and just seeing what do I want to do? Where do I want to change? Is something Arnold did? And really analyzing your strengths, your weaknesses, and building around that because that's going to help you with your planning. That's going to help you with your um, nutrition because you have so many factors to consider here. If you have a ton of fat, your main focus will be fat loss with good training to put on muscle. But if you don't have much fat, you're really going to have to put a lot of effort into effective nutrition, hardcore training. And we will get more into this, but everyone is so unique and that's where everyone's going to be entirely different. Me and Kyle are going to both be looking at this in a different way. But for me, this is kind of my process and I want to look at where I am and I have done this and that's why I've noticed I want to put on a little bit more muscle. I want to see a little bit more just nice, full, solid, healthy looking muscle. And with that always comes a little bit of strength. Happy with my level of leanness, but I just think a little more muscle will have that pop put me in a good place. And I know I can achieve that by really leaning into training. Whereas if I was maybe 15 pounds heavier, I'd be really looking to lean more into the weight loss while looking to put on muscle. So this is a big thing to consider. It's unique to you after this, go in the mirror or if you're at home, maybe go take a second, look at yourself there. That will go a long way. Weigh in, face that. I know it can be hard and it's easy to say, I think I'm like even recently, we had some sign up who said they thought they were about 90 kg. They hopped on the scale and they're actually more like 97, 98. And this happens. We're going to give ourselves the benefit of the doubt. We're human. But be brutally aware of where you are. And when you do that, it allows you to change. It allows you to be real with your situation. It gives you motivation. And do it from a position of growth. Because if you're improving, there's no reason to shame yourself or feel bad. Because you are indeed improving. You're moving forward. And that is the key. You should be more feeling shame if you know you need to change and you're not doing it. So those are my big tips. Um, and now I just think from here, a great segue is into training and really leaning into training and using this as a tool. And I know Kyle is going to crush this. So pass it over to Kyle. Training is so much. And a lot of people think like, so if you're just doing classes and cardio and all this stuff, you're not going to be able to accomplish a great body composition, body recomposition, sorry. So you really have to be doing strength training minimum three times, but ideally upwards of that five times per week mark. And so much goes into this, like similar to what Josh was saying, using the examples of a new client, similar to how we're just, let's say you look at yourself in the mirror and you see a bunch. When we look at a new client, we're able to see a ton. They obviously fill out an intake form so we can see any injuries, any setbacks, any special information that they share. But we can also see postural things. We could see weaknesses that they've shared, but also just from the eye, like we can see so much. So I really like the idea of just starting by looking at your current situation, your weaknesses, and even what the holes in your game are. You know, the things that are holding you back, such as maybe skipping out on compounds, maybe not pushing intensity. And the reason we like starting with this is because you can start just super strong. When you get a new workout routine, when you're starting out on this, it's so much better to just sit down for a little bit, do some planning, see where you've struggled in the past, see where you could do better and just go from there and fix it versus like 12 weeks into a training cycle. And you look back and you're like, man, I didn't push intensity at all. I wasn't using an RIR principle and RIR stands for reps in reserve. And that's another key part of our training program is just having pe people push to a certain intensity. I know so many people who are looking to lose fat, build muscle, do all this stuff, who will go through the motions, who will do 15 to 20 reps. They burn a little bit, but they have seven reps left in the tank. That's not going to help at all. So when it comes to proper structure, there's so much that goes into it. First of all, we look at the weak points. We look at the areas that people want to bring up more if someone wants to bring up their chest or if we think they should we'll start to program different things especially you know for the ladies we'll do a couple extra one or two extra leg days there's a lot that goes into it but even for the actual structure there's so much in terms of just like setting apart the different workouts in the different days like there's some people who will do legs two days back to back like it needs to flow and of course the biggest factor to this is just actual progressive overload which i did talk about recently which is a way to make sure that you're progressing and you're lifting more um, throughout the duration of your workout routine if you're someone who's just been lifting the exact same amount the same reps the same sets for the last 15 weeks it's going to be hard to progress whereas if you're starting to either increase reps, sets, uh, decrease rest time, increase tempo. So if you're someone who just starts to slow down the movements a little bit more while using the same amount of weight, um, if you start to increase your weight, there's so many ways to get progressive overload, but a lot of people just don't really focus on that or don't make those changes. And like just pushing yourself, like actually being brutally honest and saying, how many reps do I have in the tank left? Once again, so many people don't push it. And I just wanted to stress that strength training will always be your best friend. Cardio will help you burn more calories. It's definitely a bonus, but if you do this, 
if you get into the gym, if you crush it, if you have a right program, which we can take care of you and put together for you, you will start to see great results with awesome nutrition as well. Yeah. In terms of muscle gain, you're not going to gain muscle from eating protein or great nutrition. Like that's going to aid you in the process, but you need to do the work. You need to be in the gym. You need to challenge yourself. You need to physically get stronger, come with intention. And oftentimes, as I said earlier, it's just what is that hole? What's holding you back from your success in the gym? If you're radically on your phone, you need to address that and analyze that and say, how can I get more into it? Even me as someone who's been lifting 10 years and something I always come full circle to is where am I being complacent? Like I'll see fluff later in my workout, I'll go through some of the motions or I'll do it to eight reps because I know that's about where I'm at. But even lately, one thing I've done to challenge that because I they say it in every motivational video, I'm like, I'm gonna try this. They said, when you think you're done, you have three more. So we use an RIR system. Usually I like about RIR one of one or two. And I like doing this because lately I've been saying, okay, let's see what happens if I try and do three more. And a lot of the times I can't, I go to failure. I'm like, okay, this was dumb. I'm not doing this again next week. But on some movements like push downs, like more accessory work, I'll notice I could do the three and way more or like straight arm pull downs, like things where it's very like feely and just something you're aware of. And it's a good reminder for me to make sure I'm actually pushing myself to the ability I know I can because those extra three reps that where you're in pain, where you're screaming, but you can grind them out and maybe I could even still do one more gun to my head. That's where you're going to see a lot of the growth. That's the area where people get uncomfortable. They put the weight down. They're actually limiting their ability to see change and grow. So for me, this is going to be a big part of what I'm planning to do is to really just be aware of that, to make sure I'm lifting to my full capacity and I'm not just resting on my laurels here of what I've done in the past, what is like a reasonable amount of weight to do and instead saying, no, I want it all. I'm going to bring that much more, that much more focus, that much more intention. And just the same as I said, like if you're bad with your phone, you can, one of my clients, Jeremy, what I love is he actually has specific limits to what he can use his phone at, uh, to do when he's in the gym, which I think is absolutely amazing. And if you've noticed you're getting distracted and as soon as you're done your set, even me, I get so tempted to take my phone out of my pocket and I'm like, I need to break the surge and just sitting there in silence, breathing, thinking about my next set go such a long way. I mean, even Arnold in between each set, he thought it was a fantastic time to work on posing and awareness and being aware of the muscles you're working. And you can even take it a step further with amazing contractions and just doing everything with maximum mind muscle con uh, and just connection, focus and tension. Like these are the ways you'll really level up your results, but you can't just do it one workout. You need to do it consistently. And these can be hard to really make a habit of, but the more you can use tricks like the three rep thing, the just being really aware, not being on your phone because you can breathe and focus more, uh, taking adequate rest times, like it's so key. And what's important is you can't just go one too far into one side, not the other. You need to be getting stronger and you need to be doing higher quality just sets, movements, doing them more optimally. Combining the two is how you will see better results because if you're just purely driven on strength, you get really strong, but you might not see the compositional change you want. If you're just being super crazy, squeezy, feely with the lightest weight in the world, you can definitely see some more size, but you'll hit a roadblock where your strength won't grow as much as you'd want. So you need to make sure you're using both of these levers. They're both super, super effective and it's something you want to be aware of. So yeah, and honestly too, then most importantly is just keep doing it. People aren't going to be there filming you, applauding you, clapping for you every day. You have a good work on and do well. Like it's you and you, you got to work hard in silence and let success make the, the noise. Yeah. And even just like, I forgot to say, I, I know I mentioned the holes of the compounds, but like, it's just, it, we have such amazing principles that we put together over the last 10 plus years to help people do this. Cause we've done a lot of trial and error, but like, even just like, I'm looking at like, in, I'm not looking at it, but I'm envisioning our spreadsheets and the workouts we've created and starting with the compounds and just the way that it's structured. And like, there's just so many holes in people's workout routines especially because they either are following a one size fits all program or no program at all and just doing stuff that they feel like and it's so hard to see great progress there but like even just in terms of like we we love power building and that's something that kind of became popular but didn't actually grow to be like too popular so there's some people who do power lifting just specifically really heavy weight low reps there's some people who do bodybuilding like josh said the squeezy feely type and then we've also been a fan of just kind of combining the both you know doing some strength training getting stronger in those compound movements which will help you build so much more muscle versus like the tricep push downs and bicep curls and just doing a good combo of like the two of them with once again our workout routines that we put together over a while so yeah that's the training side of things and uh, hopefully that helped uh, you guys in some way or another 
So when we approach fitness and progress and for clients, I always like to look at things as a stool. If you've been listening to the podcast for a while, shout out you because you will know my stool analogy. We really beat it to death in the earlier episodes and I haven't mentioned it as much because I assume everyone knows it, but maybe this is the first time you heard of it. So assume we're in a room, it's a blank room and you just have a three-legged stool, a simple three-legged stool. And I say, hey, go sit on that stool. You'll go sit on it and you'll be like, why am I doing this? This is so random. But let's say I rip off one of those legs and I say, hey, go sit on that stool. You're gonna sit on it, it's gonna be a little uncomfortable, a little bit awkward, but you could still kind of sit on it, but not how you'd like to. It's definitely not ideal. Now, if I take two legs off and I tell you go sit on it, you're gonna say, not a chance, I'm gonna fall right on my butt, there's no way this will work. But this is an analogy of how fitness, nutrition, health, how it all connects together. Because one leg of that stool is training. Training is so important, such a major leg. The next leg is nutrition. And then the next leg is consistency, accountability, recovery, all those good external factors kind of balled into one. And a lot of people will try to neglect one of these things. They'll train hard, they'll sleep well, they'll take care of themselves, they'll be consistent with those things, but they will eat horrible. And that will be the thing holding them back. Or some people eat really well, but they never work out. They'll do cardio, they'll rest well. And then some people take no care of their self, their mindset, anything like that. They have no consistency, but they'll go in bursts of training really hard, uh, eating really well, but they'll fall off. So it's really important you look at all three. And I'm not saying all three need to be absolutely perfect, but we should aim for them to be as good as they can be. But when you have awareness of all three of these factors, that's how you can progress so much faster, especially in terms of body recomp. If your body's at a place, especially like if you are in that place where you're a bit skinny fat or you're holding on just too much fat in general or you're incredibly skinny, you are neglecting one of these. Like the really skinny person is likely neglecting the nutrition they need to bulk up and put on muscle or they're not training hard. And then the person who is like a little bit heavier maybe they're overly stressed out of their mind they're training hard they're eating well but it's just not connecting because they're not resting they're not doing things with intention and focus that's holding them back so there's just countless examples here and you really need to be aware of these three things in your journey and you need to be brutally honest of where you're lacking so as we segue into nutrition here what are the holes in your game with nutrition i'm going to give you the big ones here most people it's the weekends monday to friday they're on it weekends weekend warrior that's where everything falls apart seems impossible you lose control you say i'm going to reset on monday cycle repeats and then oftentimes you're gonna find yourself sacking on weight because you can do a lot of damage in just a few days. So this is a big one. If you're struggling with the weekends, you gotta figure it out. You gotta come up with a plan. It's not too hard. I assure you, you can make it happen. And with coaching, this is something we work one-on-one because everyone has different issues with the weekend. Like if it's partying, gotta learn how to do that in a way that's sustainable and healthy. If it's family dinners, there's a way to do that. If it's dinners with friends, if it's trout, like there, there's a different solution for every individual. And with our coaching, like that's where we like to go deeper is we'll really look into the psychology of what is blocking that person from their success. And right now with just this podcast, you have to be honest with yourself about what that is and see how you can overcome that. So that's where you need to start. Another good example is just eating out too frequently and losing control because of convenience. And I love eating out. I eat out a lot, but I eat out at specific places that I know are helping me. Like I basically never have like a McDonald's or a Burger King. And me and Kyle just drove to Montreal. It was like a four hour drive or whatever. And we were hungry and there wasn't many options, but we drove like an extra five minutes out of our way to get a burrito as opposed to just getting stuff from McDonald's because we knew it would not make us feel better. It's worth that five minute sacrifice. It's gonna hold us to our goals. It just makes more sense. But maybe you're that person where you're not planning and you're being held back by that. So you need to analyze that. You need to prep, you need to find healthier places. You need to learn portioning. You need to learn what to order at these places. There's always a way to do it, but you need to know and be honest with yourself if that's what's really shooting you in the foot and messing you up. Is it that you have lack of discipline when it comes down to it? Maybe 6.5 days of the week, you're fine, but that 0.5, you just go crazy and you can't stop yourself and you go into it. That's something you need to learn to work with and improve upon. Um, And maybe you're just like a big partier and it's hard for you when you party, you just lose all control and you don't know how to control that. And and once again, you just gotta be honest with yourself, identify those triggers and then reverse engineer it. Like what is causing you to do that? Every time you go out drinking, do you order a bunch of food and regret it? How can you work around that? Maybe you have a lot of protein and water beforehand, so you're in a good spot and you say, I'm gonna go out, I'm gonna have fun with my friends, but I'm only gonna have this many drinks, this is my hard cap, I'm gonna pace myself, I need to have one water after every single drink. Like 
every person has different things and like that's where it's so individualized but you need to be honest with yourself here so once again what are the holes in your game what's stopping you from getting to that next level of nutrition identify that break that the obstacle is the way so that is a big thing the next thing with a body recomp most often you're either going to want to be at maintenance for most people because at maintenance you can train hard and get a lot of the muscularity benefits from training or increased volume with cardio steps so most people you're going to want to be in around maintenance from here you can change based upon how your body's changing so if you're not seeing much change at maintenance you want to get a little bit more shredded drop just below that maintenance level just right nice below it and you should start to see some fat come off while that muscle comes on if you're someone who's a little skinnier you could be in a slight surplus you could just slowly stack on muscle really intelligently maybe like half a pound a week and you can make that adjustment but you need to know where you need to be with that so that is a big factor in body recomp and uh, even just the external factors water fiber quality of food vegetables like these do play a role but numerically you could have a lot of success by just focusing on those grand things because that is going to be the big key here um, but also these other things can be the holes that could limit you like maybe you hit your calories all the time but some days you just get so hungry you can't help it because you're eating garbage and you're eating mcdonald's three meals a day and you're hitting your protein your calories but the quality of food is just so low you have no energy you feel gross you don't feel good you have no fiber no water that is an example of something you need to fix because you're doing something right, but something about it is broken. So that's where there's so many layers to this. But if you really look at these big overarching factors, you'd be amazed at how much change you could see. I love it. And even just like the third part and the third leg to the stool, like Josh said, is just the accountability and the consistency. And I'd even add on the external factors, like the people who don't focus on sleep and stress management and all that other stuff, like these things really don't help you at all. Like if you're constantly stressed, you're not sleeping at all and all this stuff's taking place, it's it's going to be hard to build muscle and lose fat and to, to eat the right foods and to train as hard. So like, I really want you to dive into that stuff. But in terms of just even the consistency, like you're not going to be able to see success doing one week on one week off one month on one month off. Like none of that stuff works. You have to consistently show up. And even if you are going through those busier times, maybe it's a more stressful work week or travels or something like that like that the ones that see the best success are the ones that bring it down you know maybe 20 percent, whatever they may have to miss a workout they may have to just make a few changes but they're still showing up they're still putting their best foot forward and the ones who do something for a certain amount of time they're just going to see the best results possible and i find so many people struggle with this because it is easy to do something for one day two days, maybe a week, maybe two weeks, but past that, that's where a lot of people fall off. So I really recommend having that approach that you can sustainably do, but even having that accountability because there are a lot of changes that need to be made throughout this process. Some people may not realize, but if you say, hey, I'm gonna start at 2,500 calories because this is what the calculator tells me and just do this routine, it's gonna be challenging because your body's gonna adapt. There's gonna be times that us as a coach have to make changes. We have to decrease calories. We may have have to make a shift in gears of the workouts depending on what's going on. We'll probably have to bump up cardio calories. I can't tell you what the right approach is because each person's individual and that's why we do weekly check-ins and we check in with our clients. So we look at a spreadsheet and we also just check in video uh, face-to-face to see how you're going, to see how to see how everything's feeling, to see how you're doing and all that stuff. And we make those changes accordingly. And even just past that, I really recommend for the best success possible, having a community, having people around you, like having support. And that's why we, of course, are looking to help a few people today do this and see success for the rest of your life. And all you have to do is send us a message with the keyword body recomp to our Instagram, which is Colossus Fit, C-O-L-O-S-S-U-S-F-I-T. And we'll walk you through this process. We'll save you time, money, energy, and we'll just get you guaranteed results and help you feel your absolute best. Yeah. If this sounds confusing, unfortunately it is. And like, it, it's so hard because like I said, there's so many factors and where people go wrong is they'll focus in so hard on small things. They'll say, it's cause I'm not supplementing right. And you notice we didn't even talk about supplements because if you do these things, you don't need supplements at all. Like these are the big picture things. This is how you can see so much progress so fast, but oftentimes too, and like I know I've been challenging you to look at your own journey and see where you're holding yourself back, but it can be so hard to do like, Oftentimes we're so blinded by ourselves and it's hard to admit sometimes that thing that is holding us back and to make that change. But having someone on your team who's like not 
emotionally invested in it. It's so hard with ourselves because we are emotionally invested. We think, oh, well, I don't want to drop my calories too far because I'm not going to be able to do the things I want with my friends or I don't want to train for five hours a day because I have a social life. And having coaches is amazing because we can be like, hey, you don't have to drop your calories that low. You can still see your friends. Here's how you'll do it. And there's no need to be in the gym that long with this really custom perfect built for you routine. You're going to see more results in way less time in a more sustainable way. Like that's where it goes such a long way. So we'd really love to help you through this process. I love helping people with this because I just find it so exciting. And to be able to lose fat and gain muscle, you just feel like a superhero. You feel like you're cheating life. And it's just nice to unlock that puzzle and not be stuck. So this is your chance to do this. You are worth it. And if you consider all the best athletes in the world to have coaches, if you want to have one of the best bodies, why do you not have a coach? So once again, the keyword to take advantage of this is body recomp. Hit us up on Instagram at, at Colossus Fit, C-O-L-O-S-S-U-S-F-I-T. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Peace out.